Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Today is January 6, 2021. Anybody seen that match uh, commercial with the, uh, the devil meets the year 2020? Boy, I'll tell you what, they're going all out. They're making a joke out of things. Yeah, yeah, you should take a look at it. The big red devil with the horns and everything. Of course, that's not what he looks like. But, uh, you know, I don't know if any of you saw the uh, show Childhood's End. It looks like uh, the aliens depicted in that. So, boy, I'll tell you, they're... Uh, Media is really getting into it. All right. Well, with that in mind, this uh, Bible study is going to be on sin. S-I-N. Sin. What is sin? Um, are there some sins that are worse than others? Are there sins that are unforgivable? Oh, yeah. So let's take a look. Now, in Genesis 4 and verse 7, the Lord was speaking to Cain. And he said, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. I read somewhere, I think it was in one of the Jewish encyclopedias or something, that they said that there was actually a fallen angel named Sin. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, Sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him? Huh. I found that very interesting. In Genesis 10, 17, do you know there is a tribe called the Sinite? Oh, yeah. It's talking about the Canaanite tribes. It goes in the Hivite and the Archite and the Sinite. I thought, wow. A Sinite. Hmm. In Genesis 13, 13. Now, generally 13 is a number that deals with confusion or bad things. Numbers in scriptures, uh, a lot of them have meanings. You got one, one God, three for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, five is generally grace. Uh, six is man. Seven is uh, creation or completion. Eighth is new beginning. Nine is generally a bad one. Uh, ten, ten tribes of Israel. Eleven is another bad one. And then twelve, you got the um, twelve tribes of Israel, right? The ten tribes were the ten northern tribes, by the way. And then you got twenty-four. You know, you got the twenty-four elders, which I believe are the uh, twelve apostles and the twelve Patriarchs are 12 heads of the 12 tribes of Israel. And then 40 pops up a lot. You know, it rained for uh, 40 days and 40 nights with Noah. Jesus um, fasted for 40 days. You know, uh, three. Didn't uh, Jonah was in the whale's belly for three days and three, uh, three nights. And Jesus was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. You know. Certain numbers pop up in Scripture. 13 is not a good one. So Genesis 13, 13. And a lot of people don't believe it, but the way the Bible is uh, numbered in chapters, I'm not talking about the book of numbers. I'm talking about the way the Bible books are divided into chapters and verses. Uh, it seems to follow that uh, scheme of things. 
So Genesis 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Huh. So what is sin? Let's get a Bible definition of sin. All right, let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. We read, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Uh, transgression. You know, that's basically breaking the law. Uh, you know, you're doing uh, 40 miles an hour in a 25 mile an hour speed loan, well, zone in your car, driving down the street. Well, you're breaking or transgressing the law. And there's a penalty. So there's always a penalty for the law. Now, in the Old Testament, there was, oh, I don't know, all kinds of laws. Somebody counted up the laws and says there's 613. I'm not sure. I didn't count 613 laws, but, you know, everybody says, oh, well, you know, the Ten Commandments. Well, right. But there were other laws, too. Uh, those were the moral laws that were basically bound uh, everybody that was in covenant with the Lord with Israel. And then you had the blood sacrifice laws, which the tribe of Levi was bound to um, perform. So, you know, if you did something wrong, you bring a sheep to the temple. Well, tabernacle, tabernacle. They didn't have a temple back then, but they had a temple later. So you'd bring a sheep to the Levitical priest. He would sacrifice it, you know. And then you had the, um, the uh, well, those were the religious ceremonial blood sacrifice laws. For example, circumcision, that was a law. But then you had the civil laws. Um, that was the laws that the king was supposed to enforce. Now, the thing was, prior to Israel asking the Lord for, uh, well, asking Samuel and the Lord for a king, the Levites were the ones that would carry that out. For example, if you caught somebody in adultery, they were to be stoned to death. If you caught a murderer, stoned to death. Sodomite, take a guess. Yeah. Uh, witchcraft was a capital crime. Execution. So, you know, I could go over the different laws, but, you know, you, everybody pretty much should know the Ten Commandments, you know. And then Jesus condensed them into the two commandments. He basically said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On those two hang all the law and the prophets. So let's read that. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six, 36. A doctor of the law, a lawyer, you know, you're talking somebody that knows the Bible fairly well. Of course, you know, the Old Testament. Uh, do you realize the Levitical priests would study the book of Leviticus for years? Years! I mean, they were experts on the law. And you had doctors of the law. Well, they call them a lawyer, but back then and a lot of people don't know it but originally our 
top law schools in the United States, like Harvard and Yale, they used to be Bible colleges. Yeah, believe it or not. Of course, so did Oxford and Cambridge. Now they're uh, cesspools of evil. So they asked Jesus, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, what is easier? You want to keep Ten Commandments or you want to keep two? And all these Torah keepers are a bunch of liars and hypocrites. They really are. Uh, ask them when they're going to go to San Francisco and keep the Torah. Yeah. Turn the city into a ghost town. And uh, when are they going to start, uh, you know, uh, the Bible tells you what to do with uh, saucer, saucers, those that practice sorcery, those that, witches. Uh, when are they going to keep Torah with that? I can point out probably a million individuals that are into that. When are they going to keep that Torah? And the answer is never. No, they want you to keep laws. You know, like the Seventh-day Adventists. They, uh, oh yeah, oh, you got to keep the Sabbath. But Jesus said, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. And on that hangs all the law and the prophets. Oh, no, 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 you got to keep the Sabbath. Uh, well, how do you know what day is the Sabbath? Well, the seventh day. Okay, well, the calendar's been changed. How do you know the seventh day on the calendar is the seventh day of God's Word? Uh, you know, they can't. They don't. They can't they don't. So when they talk to me about keeping Torah, they're a bunch of hypocrites and liars. Of course, I'm a hypocrite too at times. But I try not to be a liar. God said, uh, well, Paul said, let every man, let every man be true. No, I'm sorry. Let God be true. Let God be true and every man a liar. So that's you. That's me. That's yeah. And that is found in Romans three and verse four. God forbid. Yea, let God be true. But every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. We're all going to be judged. Some of us to condemnation. Some of us to uh, justification. Uh, Jesus said, by our words we'd be justified, and by our words we'd be condemned. So... And that is found in Matthew 12, 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now, when God took Israel out of Egypt, he led them into the desert for 40 years. And... Let's face it, you go to a desert, what's growing there? Lots of fruit trees? No. Uh, you know why it's a desert? Because there's no water. And it's hot. It's, you know. So they had to depend upon the Lord for their very being. He showed them all the miracles in Egypt. You know, there was light where they lived in Goshen, but it was darkness in Egypt. Uh, the firstborn died in Egypt. 
But those that had the blood of the lamb on the lentil house, they were spared. Yes, they saw the miracles. The Lord led them out into the wilderness. Forty years, their clothes didn't get old. Their shoes didn't wear out. I mean, I had a pair of shoes that lasted four and a half or five years. But I can't imagine a pair of shoes lasting 40 years. Or, you know, sandals, whatever. Uh, the Lord had Moses strike the rock and their water came out. I mean, for probably, you know, thousands and thousands of people. And he supplied them with manna, bread from the sky. Well, food from the sky. I don't know if it's bread, but um, I mean, you know, he wanted he wanted to take them out of Egypt and them to learn a lesson. But do you know what he called the wilderness? It was called the wilderness of sin. S-I-N. Exodus 16.1. And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Hmm. So, and Exodus 17, 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Riphidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Now, King David had died, and Solomon, his son, had taken over as king in Israel. And he dedicated, I believe he was dedicating the temple. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 24, I'm sure you've heard this, but you know, this is this is applicable today. I mean, this is for today. You know, there's people say, oh, well, that was for the Jews. That's not for us. Uh, really? And I'm not making fun of Southerners. I mean, I was born in Kentucky. And if you look, Kentucky was a Confederate state, by the way. Um, but my family was from Louisville. They call it Louisville. Uh, I don't know how you get Louisville from Louisville, but uh, that's how they pronounce it. But uh, when you go to that part of the Kentucky, everybody sounds like they're from the Midwest. Whereas you go 90 miles south, everybody sounds like they're from the south. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm sort of kind of mocking one of the preachers that I knew in Tennessee he was a boy he was a real piece of work doesn't matter what the Bible says you know well God loves the the Antichrist yeah I don't think so I don't think God loves the Antichrist but hey what can I tell you and if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9 all right second Chronicles chapter 6 this is for today. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee. Oh, yeah. You know, I was a very, very small kid in the early to mid-60s. Women wore head coverings. Um... Uh, you know, I mean, some women would go to the beach and they would wear full bathing suits. I mean, you know, you didn't see thong bathing suits back then. 
Um, they didn't have the filth on TV that they have now. Uh, abortion was illegal. Sodomites were still in the closet. And um, up until June 6, 1966, well, that's when, uh, you know, 6666, that's when the Church of Satan was founded by Anton Levy. I mean, LeVay. Well, he changed his name. Um, they'll tell you his name was Howard Stanton, but that's a lie. Things started to change in the late 60s. In the early 60s, we could get on our bicycles in Miami. You know, Miami was like the 26th most populated uh, city, largest city in the United States. It, you know, it was in the top 30. Get on our bike and go anywhere. Even 10 o'clock at night. Never worried about it. Play city was, uh, it was safe. People didn't kill each other like they do now. But boy, that has changed. Somebody sent me a thing. They said the number one killer of childhood, uh, of children now, the number one way, uh, uh, killer of children is abortion. And abortion's been legal since, I think, 1973. And they've been averaging two to three million children a year died of abortion. Do the math. Do the math. Uh, there's got to be, I don't know, over 100 million children aborted in this country alone. Their blood will be required of this nation. Of course, the church doesn't believe that. They don't believe that. No, absolutely not. God's going to rapture us out of here. Oh, really? In 1 Peter... 417 for the time has come that judgment judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall be the end of them that obey not that obey not the gospel of God oh yeah you know judgment starts at the house of God now, let me tell you something. This is a Bobism. A church that tolerates evil will allow evil to spread. And when evil is spread and has grown large enough, that evil will not tolerate the church. There was a quote. We're going to read. We're going to go read. Uh, Chronicles 6, 2 Chronicles 6. Uh, do you know what a barometer is? A barometer is an instrument used to measure the weather. You ever heard of barometric pressure? You know, those of you that watch the weather, you know. Oh, the, that hurricane's got a barometric pressure, blah, 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 whatever, you know. So what's a barometer? It's an instrument to measure the weather. Somebody wrote, politicians are merely a spiritual, moral barometer of the people. And boy, that is the truth. You got wicked politicians because you got wicked people. Do you know that there are probably at least a dozen states? Uh, we're talking about the 13, 13 colonies that had uh, religious um, standards. Oh, I don't know how to put this. But you, you had to profess, you had to have a profession of faith in Jesus Christ to be in elected office in certain states. States like Massachusetts and New York, you know, the original 13 colonies. It was a requirement. And, of course, your 
liberal Democrats of America or whatever, I forget what they're called, uh, they want to do away with that. Technically, every dual citizen, if you catch my drift, of a little country in the Middle East is technically illegal in any of those states like New York and New Jersey, Massachusetts. Yeah. Because they don't have a profession of Jesus Christ. But those laws are being ignored, just like the Constitution and everything else. So, But with that in mind, 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 24. And if thy people Israel... Now this is Solomon. Solomon was called the wisest man. Who wisdom exceeded all the men of the East. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy. What? But Chaplain Bob, God loves everybody. Let me tell you something, people. When you, when you hear that garbage run away, I mean, you know, it's possible that person is a believer. You know, a lot of people are evangelists. And, you know, if they want to preach to people about the love of God and John 3.16 and, and the gospel, you know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, that's fine. But when I hear people say that God loves everybody, I know I'm either dealing with a baby Christian that has absolutely no discernment and shouldn't be teaching doctrines other than the gospel. That's the only thing they should be teaching. The, the sinless virgin birth, sinless life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's all they should be allowed to teach because they ruin, they ruin the weightier matters of the Bible. They ruin it if they're even saved. I think most of the people that teach that are, are devils. Why, God loves everybody. So, you know, there's no reason to exclude anybody from coming to America. You know, let's open our borders to everybody, people that hate that hate Christians. Let's, let's let them in. You know, we got to give them a chance to get saved. Uh, what, did, what did the Lord tell Israel to do? To certain groups of people, he said to kill them. Boy, you won't hear that taught in church. Yeah, God went from, uh, he hated people and said to go kill them, to now he loves them and wants them to believe on his son. I mean, really. And then the Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, really? You know, the Lord has enemies. Christ has enemies. Israel has enemies. And I'm not talking about that little place over in the Middle East full of antichrists. That's in name only. But when you hear people say that God loves everybody, tell them, you know, read Malachi chapter 1 where the Lord says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And then they'll tell you, well, you know, that just means that God loved Esau a little bit less than Jacob. Oh, really? That's why uh, the Lord says he's going to have war with Amalek, who was the grandson of Esau. He's going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. That's why he says that um, Jacob's going to be a flame. And Esau is going to be for stubble, and there won't be any remaining of the house of Esau, for I have spoken it. That's in Obadiah. I think it's in chapter 1, verse 8. I, You know, you hear these idiots. I think they're Satanists. You know, if people knew that God had enemies, why, Christians would know, well, we have enemies too. But no, they, you know, oh, God loves everybody. Now, I'm not saying everybody that 
believes that garbage is a, a devil. But, uh, you know, you got evangelists. Evangelists are not teachers. They're not pastors. They're supposed to help the uh, newborn baby in the faith get born. And then it's the pastor's and the teacher's job to take that newborn baby and to turn them into battle-hardened soldiers. But most Christians never grow up. They never become men. They never become soldiers. And that's our job. But listen... 2 Chronicles 6, 24. And if thy people be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee. Oh, yeah. You wonder why? Do you wonder why the Lord um, looks like it's he's abandoned Europe, the UK, and America? Sin, people. Why does Satan want to lead us into sin? Because he knows that God will allow judgment. Judgment begins at the house of God. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture churches. You know, there's a reason why Playboy and Hustler magazines came out. Um, porn, porn and gambling are the top two things on the internet. Top two things. Porn and gambling. Um, you know, that's why all these wicked politicians, a reflection of the wickedness of the people, are leading the people into sin. You know, sodomites getting married. You know, I mean, you know, this is why Satan wants God's people to sin because God will allow judgment. And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, oh yeah, and shall return and confess thy name and pray. And make supplication before thee in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens. And forgive the sin of thy people Israel. And bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. When the heaven is shut up. And there is no rain. Because they have sinned against thee. Yet, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn, turn from their sin, turn from their sin. There's people today that teach that repentance just means to change your mind about believing in the Lord. You don't have to turn from sin. Just believe on the Lord. Hitman from the mafia, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can keep your job being a hitman for the mafia. Hey, eternal security, once saved, always saved. Yeah, that's the kind of garbage that they teach nowadays. But that's not what Solomon taught, said. He said, yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin forsake their sin, leave their sin, and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them. What does it mean to afflict them? Judgment, people. God's given them a spanking. Then hear thou from heaven, and forgive the sin of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, when thou hast taught them the good way, wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. If there be dearth in the land, what's a dearth? Uh, I believe it's 
take the R out and it's death. But I believe it's a... Um, oh, I better look it up. I've looked this up a couple times and I still can't remember it. Uh, scarcity as a dearth of corn. Want, need, famine. Uh, barrenness, sterility as the death of a plot, a, land, a dearth of a plot of land. Uh, the desert would be a dearth. There'd be nothing growing there. All right, so let's continue. Verse 28. Second Chronicles 6, 28. If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, disease, if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies, enemies, besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made of any man or of all thy people Israel, when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief, and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and render unto every man according unto all his ways. That's scary, people. And render unto every man according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways, so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. All right, let's read verse 32. Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of thy people Israel, but is come from a far country for thy great name's sake, and thy mighty hand, and thy stretched out arm, if they come and pray in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth for the, uh, to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, and to fear thee, as doth thy people Israel, and may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name. If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, if they sin against thee. For there is no man which sinneth not. And thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies. And they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near, Yet if they bethink themselves in the land, whether they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned. Those are probably three of the words that the Lord loves to hear out of our mouths more than anything else. We have sinned. We have done amiss and have dealt wickedly. If they return to thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives and pray toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and toward the city, which thou hast chosen and toward the house, which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. Now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the 
the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. Yes, people, we have enemies, and the Lord has enemies. And sadly, very, very few will identify the enemies. Very, very few. But uh, if you'd have known me in 11th grade in high school, oh, you'd have said, oh, boy, Bob is a, uh, Bob's one of the goats. He's, he's an enemy. In Exodus 15, verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. A man of war. The Lord is his name. Oh, yeah. But they want us to think that, well, you know, well, that was the old God. And yeah, you know, that's the Old Testament God. He was mean and cruel and evil. But now we got this New Testament God, Jesus, and he's loving and, you know, he's totally the opposite. Well, I don't think so. I've heard people actually say that. Matter of fact, I've heard a lot of people say that. Oh, the uh, thing about Esau, that was in Obadiah 1 in verse 18. It says, And the house of Jacob shall be a flame. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. You know what you do with stubble? Burn it. That's what stubble is and does. It burns. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. But Chaplain Bob, now God loves Esau. He's going to save him. He just has to believe in Jesus. Uh, I don't think so. I think I believe the Bible. You know, and then they'll take verses to Israel or the church and then applies it to everybody. I mean, can you imagine I, you know, one of your family members dies and they're reading the will and I walk in on the will and say, oh, where's my inheritance? You know, oh, well, you said, you know, they were going to divide all the, the stuff equally. Well, I'm not part of the family. Uh, the, the will's not for me. It's for your family. Well, that's what the Bible is. It's, it's a book for the family. The family of Israel, the church, the people. You know, it doesn't apply to everybody. Now, the stranger that loves the Lord, yeah, great. But you got to realize something. We're in a war. Most people don't even know you're in a war. And then those that do know we're in a war have a hard time identifying who the enemy is. And you got the enemies in all the top positions. And you better believe these politicians are not going to hire honest police. No, absolutely no. Because honest police would arrest dishonest politicians, wouldn't they? No. So they're going to hire police just like the politicians. Just like them. You know, Peter came to the Lord in Matthew 18, 21 and said, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft, or often, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Now what is seventy times seven? Four hundred and ninety. And if you're counting, you miss the point. That's the thing. Now we're talking about a brother. Okay, we're not talking about the enemy. I don't think we're supposed to forgive God's enemies. There's a big difference there.
big difference. You know, we're supposed to love our enemies. There's a big difference between loving our enemies and loving the enemies of the Lord. You know, the Bible told you what to do with Satanists and witches and saucers. And it's not let them incorporate a church and get tax exempt status. Uh, yeah. You know, the uh, one day, these love preachers, God loves everybody preachers, they're going to have, uh, uh, they're going to have, I'm being facetious, but they're going to have fun explaining to the Lord. Uh, well, let's face it. Every year, there are thousands and thousands of children that disappear. And I know what's happening to them. They're being, uh, well, some of them are being sacrificed to Satan. And uh, the Lord's going to ask these people, well, why did you tolerate this? Why did you tolerate Satanists in, 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 my, in my land? Why did you tolerate this? Why did you, why? And they're going to say, but Lord, we wanted to preach to them and get them saved. Uh, meanwhile, they're murdering and kidnapping children. Yeah. You know, there was a Christian detective. I think he was in L.A., he was in California. I'm not sure if it was L.A. or not, but he was in California. And um, long story short, they try, somebody, uh, someone tried to kidnap his kid from the hospital, and he uh, caught him and uh, arrested her, went to her apartment or house or whatever, found all kinds of satanic literature, and found a satanic calendar and the three big whole their unholy days holidays whatever was halloween of course christmas and easter not passover but easter and he did a record search now, this is before they had computers like they got today and he found out that about half of all the kidnappings were two to three weeks before those three major unholy days. Christmas, Easter, pass, uh, um, Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. Two to three weeks before Halloween, a bunch of kidnappings occur. Bunch of them. You're going to tell me that uh, that little satanic calendar is not right? Oh, yeah. They're going to have... A lot of fun explaining to the Lord why uh, they tolerated this evil. And then they're going to go, well, well, Lord, why didn't you rapture us out of here? Hey, you tolerated evil. Evil's not going to tolerate you. Your own wickedness is going to go upon your own head. So... But there's a difference between our enemies and the Lord's enemies. And there's 300 and something centers in the United States where they practice Satanism. Yeah, over 300 and something of them. And most of them are located in New York, Florida, and California. That's where the majority of them are. Let you know a little secret. God hated sin in the Old Testament and he hates sin in the New Testament too. In Jeremiah 31, 31, chapter 31 and verse 31, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant, a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Ah, a new covenant. In John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God 
which taketh away the sin of the world. In John 5.14, Jesus healed a man. And then afterward it says, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Now when Jesus had come to Jerusalem, he did all kinds of miracles. Now, some of the Old Testament prophets did some miracles that were similar to Jesus, like, you know, raising from the dead and what have you, um, you know, but nobody did as many miracles as Jesus did. And Jesus did all kinds of miracles. I mean, he healed the lame, the sick, gave sight to the blind, uh, healed lepers, uh, raise the dead. I mean, Jesus did all kinds of miracles. And in John 15, 24, Jesus said, If I had not done among them the works, or miracles, right? If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So they hated Jesus and they hated God the Father that had sent his son. All right, now Jesus is getting ready to be crucified. And... In John 16, starting in verse 7, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Ah, you want to get rid of your sin? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what an evangelist should be teaching. Of righteousness, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye shall see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. And that's Satan. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you and shall show it unto you all things that the father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. If you ever go to a Pentecostal churches and they're just talking about, oh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, oh, Holy Spirit, praise the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, the thing is, Jesus said in John 16, 13, that the Holy Spirit wouldn't speak of himself. And in 14, it says, he will glorify me. The Holy Spirit is going to uplift Christ. He's not going to speak of, you know, it's not uplifting the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is to uplift Christ. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit that should dwell within God's believers. 
Uh, Pentecostal churches. I, uh, I, I You know, when I was in, uh, how old was I? I was in uh, ninth grade. My sister and my mother and I went to a Pentecostal church. And they had snakes. Yeah, the ones with the triangle heads. Yeah. And we just like, kind of like, you know, we just moved from Miami to uh, Brevard County, Florida. And we, uh, you know, we're looking for a new church and, uh, you know, snake handlers. Speaking in tongues, gibberish. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, yeah, we, we saw these snakes and, um, you know, looked at each other and said, you know, maybe we're in the wrong place. And we turned around, got left, got in our car and took off. And that was the last time we ever went to church as a family. All because of a bunch of, probably a bunch of devils. I don't know. If that pastor was really saved, I'll have to give him uh, an apology. But uh, where does it say to handle poisonous snakes in the Bible? Where? I can't find that anywhere. Now, yeah, I know the apostles were told that if they, if they were, I uh, uh, forget what, the, the apostles were told that if they drank poison or, you know, any venomous thing that they wouldn't be hurt. But I'm not so sure that applies to us. So what can I tell you? All right. Now we're talking about sin, transgression of the law, right? That's what this study is all about. Let's go to John 19. Now there is sin. And then there's extra special sin. Oh, but Bob, no, no, no. All sin is sin. Um, well, that's not what Jesus says. Let's take a look. All right, John 19, verse 1. Now, they had taken Jesus in the garden. Uh, they took him to the high priest where they did the fake trial and lied and uh, convicted him unlawfully by the way now they brought him to Pilate and they're trying to convince Pilate to kill Jesus John 19 1 then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put on him a purple robe purple is the color of royalty they're mocking him and said hail Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. All right, so G Paul, Pilate's speaking to the Jews here. He says, I find no fault in him. Now, you know, when you got crowds of 5,000 people following Jesus around, you better believe the Roman government's got some spies in there listening to what he's teaching. I will guarantee you Pilate had spies in that crowd listening, giving him reports of what Jesus was doing. Because you don't want revolts. You don't want riots so you better believe Pilate knew what Jesus was teaching that ye may know that I find no fault in him then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate saith unto them behold the man when the chief priests, now we're not talking about Vatican priests here. No, 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 no. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, 
Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, Oh, okay, now we know who they're talking to and, and about. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. You better believe Pilate had heard all the stories about all the miracles that Jesus had done. You know, when your friends say that you're a great guy or you're good at something, let's say you're a piano pl player. You know, just because your mother and your friends and your family say, oh, you're a great piano player. Eh, maybe, maybe not. But when those that don't like you or those that are in competition with you and, and say, hey, I don't like the guy, but he's a great piano player. Well, that means something. You better believe that everybody knew that Jesus was doing miracles. I mean, here it is. They have a funeral. The guy's dead, like Lazarus, for four days, three or four days. And then Jesus raises them from the dead? I mean, come on. Come on, people. You think Pilate was in a corner, didn't know what was going on? Please. He was governor of, of the region. He knew. I'll guarantee you he knew. The Jews answered him. We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Here it is. Pilate, a Roman, doesn't know probably very much about the Bible. He was more afraid than the those that were scholars in the law. Verse 9. And went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Listen to this carefully. Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. People, when bad things happen, God allows it. God allows it. America has no idea what she's getting ready to face. And Europe. And UK and EU and USSA and Canada, of course. Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Wow, Chaplain Bob, I never saw that before. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Jesus acknowledged, Pilate has sin, yes. But those that delivered Christ unto Pilate have a greater sin. See, there's sin, and then there's a greater sin. All right, let's read 1 John chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So we're supposed to love the Lord and those that are in 
the Lord. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. And of course, the seventh day Adventists will tell you, oh, well, that's the Sabbath. No, the two commandments, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. On this hang all the law and the prophets. Uh, did you know that uh, those that are led of the Spirit, there's no law? What? Yeah, all those people that are always pushing, oh, the law, the law, the law. You know, maybe they need to get saved. Maybe they need to get the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking that Pentecostal stuff. All right, we're going to go back to uh, 1 John, but let's read Galatians chapter 5 real quick. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But Chaplain Bob Ellen White of the Seventh-day Adventist said, we got to keep the Sabbath. Well, maybe she wasn't Maybe she doesn't have the fruit of the Spirit. Maybe she doesn't have the Spirit. What do you want? You want the uh, table tablets of stone, or do you want the tablets of the law written in your heart? What do you want? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. All right, let's go back to John chapter 19 real quick. And then we're going to go back to 1 John. All right, in John 19, 11, I'm sorry I'm jumping around like this. Jesus answered Pilate, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. Oh, I know you've heard that lie. Oh, the Romans killed Jesus. No, they did not. That's a lie from hell. You hear somebody say that, run away from that church or that pastor because he's a liar. And he doesn't know the Bible, and he shouldn't be teaching anybody anyways. He's probably a Satanist, 90-something percent chance. Show him John 19, 12. Show him he's a liar. Matter of fact, show him in the Bible study in front of everybody. Don't go to him privately. Make a fool out of him. And watch him kick you out in love. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, they don't like being called out. I mean, a humble man would say, wow, you're right. Oh, uh, I was wrong. Oh, but that, yeah, that ain't going to happen. Uh-uh. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, Jesus. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Ah, so, yeah, you get the message? When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat him down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Wow. All right, let's go back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. I guess we'll start over. Who 
whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Yeah, love the Lord and love thy neighbor. What's so grievous about that? For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. Remember when Jesus was on the cross, and he was dead, and the centurion took the spear and pierced his side? What came out? blood, and water. See, when you're dead, the water separates from your blood. Yeah. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that heareth, I'm sorry, it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. I'll let you know a little seeker here. There are people who tell you that doesn't belong in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Basically, what they're telling you is Jesus is not God. In the flesh. Read First Corinth, uh, First Timothy three sixteen. Of course, they'll tell you that doesn't belong in the Bible either. Uh, you know, when you hear that kind of stuff, you know you're talking to a devil. All your modern Bibles make this uh, change. This verse, verse eight. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God that he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And what is that witness? The Holy Spirit, people. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Do you realize that every synagogue they've made God a liar? Ooh, Chaplain Bob, you're putting words into their mouth. Um, whatever, dude. He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Where does that leave the people in the synagogue? I'll give you three guesses. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And that name, people, is Jesus. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah, we got to ask things that are his will. Uh, Lord, uh, what was that Janice Joplin song? Uh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Uh, I don't think that's his will, but... You know, I wouldn't mind having a Mercedes Benz, but I, I don't think I could afford the insurance. But hey, you know. 
but I'll be just as happy with a Toyota or a Honda, you know. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Now listen to this. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Huh, did you know there's a sin not unto death and there's a sin unto death? Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin and there is a sin not unto death. What is a sin unto death? Uh, there are certain sins that are abominations, which is a sin that God really, 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 really hates. Uh, witchcraft. Sodomy. Those were sins unto death. Boy, you don't hear those Torah keepers talking about that, do you? No, they're a bunch of liars and hypocrites. Verse 18, well, 17. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So, Leviticus 18.22 Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Wow. Now they're a protected class. The church tolerated evil the evil spread and there will come a day when the evil will not tolerate the church there was a i think it was a baptist church in san francisco that was uh preaching against sodomy and big time i mean big time preaching against it i think they were on i, I i'm not sure either they were passing out flyers or public events or, you know, public corners, loudspeakers. I don't know. Maybe radio. I don't know. But the uh, LBGT whatever community got wind of it and they decided to riot and destroy the church. Well, they broke, they broke down the doors and went in and trashed the place. I mean, broke the pews, uh, overthrew the altar and broke it, uh, broke the windows and uh, the people of the church call the police, and the police chief, who was one of them, not one of the Christians, by the way, uh, stood there and watched. And not one person was arrested. None. Even though they watched the whole thing. You know what? There will come a time when the church will be driven out by the wicked. Yeah. They will drive them out of the city. And guess what? Like when Abraham pleaded with God to spare Sodom for 10 righteous men, when there's not 10 righteous people in New York or L.A. or San Fran, Sicko, um, look out. God will judge and destroy it. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. How about Leviticus 20, 13? If any, man, if, any, if a man lie also with mankind as he lieth with a woman, 
Both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. What does that mean? It means they're, whoever puts them to death is guiltless before the Lord. Of course, the uh, back in this day, uh, they didn't. Israel didn't have a king. Well, they had a king. He was called the Lord, and the Levites were the religious and civil rulers at the time. Well, then they decided, oh uh, well, we don't want the Lord as king, so we want a we want a king like all the nations. So they, you know, the Lord gave him Saul, King Saul, and then replaced him with King David. So, yeah. Um, in Deuteronomy 7.25, uh, The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Um, my guess is when something is dedicated to Satanism, you don't want it in your house. That is my guess. That is my guess there. Verse 26. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly de detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor or hate it, for it is a cursed thing. Deuteronomy 12, 31. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters have they burnt, have they burnt, their sons and their daughters have they, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. A burnt sacrifice. Do you know what that, you know what that word is? Holocaust. Yeah, that's the word. Um, I wonder, you wonder why abortion became legal? Deuteronomy 12, 31. There you go. Abomination. And all the pre-tribbers think they're going to fly away any second now. They're just going to fly away. Oh, uh, boy, God is going to show them how wrong they were or are. And all those preachers that teach this stuff as fact are going to be proven to be false prophets. You know, I got a lot of faults, a lot of them. Matter of fact, if the Lord lists every sin I've ever done, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be, I'm going to be there for a while. Yeah, probably months, maybe years, but uh, yeah. But you know what? Preaching false prophecies is not one of those things. That's not one of my sins. Y'all, you know all these men that like to wear uh, the clothing of a female? Yeah. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Oh, yeah. In 1 Kings 11, and verse 5. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess, the goddess, of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. Uh, she has many names. Uh, Columbia. Oh, wait, District of Columbia. You know, that's the name of the uh, Statue of Liberty, the goddess, Columbia. Yeah, District of Columbia, our uh, capital, right? Uh, Easter is the spring goddess of fertility. Did you know that? Passover is not Easter. Bunny rabbits. Oh, yeah. Why pick bunny rabbits? Uh, 
You know, Playboy bunny rabbits. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, never mind. You get the idea. Um, the Hebrew Roots people and the You Know Who's call her She Kina. S H E K I N A H. And they try to tell you the Holy Spirit is the feminine side of God. Yeah, God the Father did the Holy Spirit and Jesus was born, is basically what they're saying. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. So, goddess. Yeah, don't worship the goddess. That's another abomination. In 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Kings, Kings, 2 Kings 23-24. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, we're talking satanic spirits, and why are they familiar? Because you know them quite well. They're not strangers, they're familiar. Moreover, the worker with familiar spirits, you know, people that do seances, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away. Josiah was a good king. I'm looking forward to meeting him one day. Uh, and when it says Josiah put him away, it didn't mean he stuffed him in a closet. No, he got rid of them. And all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. You know what a wizard is? A male witch. Harry Potter people. Oh yeah. Do you know the Harry Potter books outsold the Bible one year? Oh yeah. Harry Potter outsold the Bible. God, Satan knows that if he gets uh, land the sin just enough, that God will say, you know what? I don't care about these people anymore. You can kill them all. I don't care. And Satan will say, oh, yeah, I'll uh, let me do it. I, I volunteer. Yeah. Here you go, people. Um, just a quick note here. The word here, uh, it says these six things, uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Um, it says these, thing, these six things doth the Lord hate, hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. That word hate there is the same word where the Lord says he hated Esau. Same word, but they'll tell you that, you know, well, God loved Jacob, but he but he loved Esau less. So these six things doth the Lord love less? Really? Yea, seven are abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, murder, and heart that defieseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Abominations, people. In Exodus 22 and verse 18, Thou shalt not suffer or allow, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Oh, tell that to the Torah keepers. Bunch of hypocrites and liars. Deuteronomy 18.10 There shall not be found any among you that causeth his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, burn him alive, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. An enchanter is somebody that casts magic spells. Ah, I think you got a good idea of what a uh, abomination is. So let's take a look at some other things. And oh, by the way, those are sins unto death. Blasphemy against the Lord. Uh, 
in the Old Testament was another death sentence. However, there's a difference in the New Testament. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 3. Um, Jesus had cast out some devils out of some people, right? Uh, unclean spirits. So in Mark 3, verse 22, And the scribes, these were the Jewish copyists of the law. You know, they were the Bible. Uh, they copied the law, the Bible. Well, they didn't have printing presses back then, so somebody had to hand copy the Bible. You know, and you do that a couple hundred times, you're going to know the Bible fairly well, or you should. So here it is, Jesus is casting out devils. In Mark 3, 22, And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He, Jesus, he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Wow, that's pretty uh, blasphemous. Verse 23, And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said, He hath an unclean spirit. They attributed the works of God and the Holy Spirit unto the devil. You want to know why a certain group of people in the Middle East can't hear the gospel? They teach this. To this day, they teach this. That Jesus performed his miracles by the power of the devil. There is a sin, and there is a sin unto death. And this is one of those sins unto death. And here's another one. Uh, I think this is the last one. I'm not sure. Revelation 14. We just covered this in my last Bible study, but we're going to cover it again. Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If, a man, if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. So it's going to be poured out full strength into the cup of his hatred, right? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The two commandments, people. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On that hang all the law and the prophets. Bingo. 
All right, so let's take a look at some things here. Does God want you to keep the laws written on tables of stone? Now remember, in Romans 5.12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay. Now in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, For he, God, hath made him, Jesus, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that is the gospel. I don't know how people can read this and say Paul was a false apostle. I don't get it. How can you read the book of Romans? Oh, I know why. Yeah. Let me tell you. You know why they don't like Paul? Because the Hebrew roots and the Judaizers. You see, Paul was the apostle to the so-called Gentiles. And where did Paul go? He went to Greece and he went to Italy, Rome. And they don't want you to make the connection that those people were Israelites. They don't want that. No, they want you to think, that oh, they're just not Gentiles, which means non-Jew. No, Gentile just means nation. Sometimes heathen, sometimes Israel. God promised Abraham he'd be the father of many nations. Why didn't they use the word Gentile? It's the same word. Sometimes they use nations, sometimes they use Gentiles, but it's the same word in the uh, Hebrew and in the Greek. They used uh, Gentile and nations interchangeably. It'll sound pretty funny if, you know, uh, they said, well, Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many Gentiles. You know, but they didn't. They said nation. They don't want you to know that God, you know, Paul went to Greece and Paul went to Rome. And he preached to them. And people got saved. See, the Bible teaches that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, does all mean all? Uh, well, did Jesus sin? Hebrews 4.15 For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Who's the high priest? Christ. You know, Hebrews 9.28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Wow. All right, uh, 1 John for chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Oh, yeah. All right, let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And Corinth was a city in Greece. Oh, yeah. And the New Testament was written in Greek. You know, that's another reason why they don't want you to know about Paul. You know, they'll say, Paul's a false apostle. You know, the New Testament was written in Greek. But they always want to take you back to the... Hebrew, they say, but it really isn't Hebrew. No, it's Yiddish. Yiddish is not Hebrew. And 90% of the Israelis over there do not speak Hebrew. They know Yiddish. Yiddish only looks like Hebrew. It is not Hebrew. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, Epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. 
In other words, you want to get a letter from somebody saying how, you know, how great you are commending you. Verse two, ye are our epistle letter written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, listen carefully, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, you know, not, not those Ten Commandments written in stone, brought down from the mountain with, with Moses. No, no, no. But with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through, through Christ to God word. Ah, okay. All right, let's go to Romans. Uh, let's see. Romans chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and through their th thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Here is a wonderful verse. Jeremiah 31, 33. This is Old Testament, people. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. You know, Lord doesn't want us to keep the laws on tables of stone. He wants us to keep the law written in our hearts. I mean, come on, Seventh-day Adventists. And let's read Galatians 5, verse 22, one more time, and we'll close this out. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor, right? The two commandments. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Uh, in today's world, it's kind of hard to have joy. Is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Oh, yeah. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. I hope you learned something. I'm not sure how long I'm going to be on the tube. Uh, I can't really... I don't know. You know, the way the social media is getting to be... Uh, I got another week's ban on fake book. I just came off a three-day ban, and they gave me another seven days. Uh, those uh, fact-checkers said that my telling the truth was wrong. Oh, yeah. So, seems like you, you're not allowed to talk about the, uh, the J word. You're not allowed to talk about immigration. And you're not allowed to talk about the uh, Vaseline. You know, the uh, Vaseline that you that they're promoting now. Yeah, I don't even like using the word. But, um, yeah. 
those things get you banned. I honestly don't think we have that much time anyway. So, like I say, I got a free downloads. Anybody wants all my Bible studies? Uh, well, maybe not all of them, but, you know, 99, 98% of them. Um, you know, take a look. Uh, free download. It's, it's in there. Um, but I honestly, I don't think we have that much time. I really don't. But the Lord will keep me up as long as he wants me to be up. It's like uh, Jesus told Pilate, Thou couldest have no power over me at all, except it were given thee from above. And I think I'm paraphrasing that, but I'm pretty close. So I'll be on YouTube until the day that Father says, Nope, his work is done. That's it. Boom. And that'll be my uh, cue to do whatever plan B, whatever that might be. Well, plan B for me is what the Lord has in mind, whatever he has in mind. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.